Let me try to speak louder. Maybe just a bit higher. Okay, yeah. So uh, this is a joint project with my PhD supervisor, Professor Egger, also from the ETH of Zurich. Um, so the motivation, uh, first motivation is to help the Swiss wine producer in defining their price policy and understand the reaction of the consumer to a variation in prices. Uh, the idea of the paper is to estimate the price elasticity, so in the overall, for the, all the Swiss wine, and then disaggregate it but, uh, by Swiss wine region and uh, colors, different colors, so uh, uh, red, white, and rosé. The key findings is that an increase of 1% in the prices, I mean for the overall uh, Swiss wine, is associated, seem to be associated with a 2% reduction in the consumption. Um, so a price elasticity of about uh, minus two. Uh, some general considerations. So we have the Nielsen data. These are data provided by the Swiss Wine Market Observatory, which I also uh, are part of this. Uh, the, da the data set is data from the retail market. So we have all the bottle uh, scan uh, at the cashier in the, in the main supermarket in Switzerland. The main variable are the, so the quantity and the prices that we interpret that as uh, equilibrium. Uh, we are also launching a new statistic to, to get different channels of distribution like uh, Oreca, so hotel, restaurant, and cafe, and direct sale of the pro producer in Switzerland. Uh, there are some problems of endogeneity and simultaneity. So, for example, to, to, to check the, the causal effect of prices in, on quantity. So we will provide some strategy or potential so solution to, to that uh, problem. Just to present the, the situation in Switzerland, so we have six um, wine region. Um, in, in the west part, so we have the French-speaking part, we have so Valais, Vaux, Genève, and, uh, and um, Three Lakes. Then we have the Italian-speaking part, Ticino in the south, which is more red, uh, Merlot. And then we have in the red the German speaking part, which is um, considered as one way in red. The data, so the structure of the data, we have like uh, four weekly data, so 13 observations per year. Uh, a time of span of three years, now we are getting also 2015. We have about uh, 180 labels, different labels. For example, uh, Merlot Red Ticino, Fondant White Valais, which is a combination so of wine arts, uh, color, and region. And then uh, so, uh, so different variables like the, the color, uh, the region, the AUC, and also uh, foreign wines. This is just an example of the structure of the, the database. I will not spend a lot of time on that. Uh, then, so we can see that the um, Swiss wine is very heterogeneous across the, the region. Uh, for example, we see that for the two main producers of so Valais and Vaux, in the first case we have a mixture of red and white. For Canton Vaux it's extremely uh, white, so it's the wine of the Chasselas and a bit of Chardonnay as well. Then we have Geneva Trilake that are quite specialized on rosé wine and the, 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 the Italian part and the German part are more uh, on, on red uh, share. So, so this is briefly the, the descriptive statistics. So we have quantity prices. We have different time invariant variable, like of course color region. Uh, some individual invariant uh, variable, uh, for example, the exchange rate, the CPI, imported prices of uh, foreign wine, etc. And then the last three, so temperature, sunshine, rainfall, so some weather, uh, to say, yeah, weather uh, variable that we will use as a, um, an instrument um, to fix this causal effect on prices on quantities. Uh, there is a strong seasonal consumption. Uh, I took so three uh, different um, labels with three different colors. So we see f for the first, it's a rosé. So we see these peaks in summer. We wrote also a little article on, we find a high variation, uh, sorry, high correlation of temperature and rosé wine consumption. And for, so for red wine and white wine, it's more, I would say more random. So we have to take into account also uh, from this uh, seasonal consumption. 
Okay, so some tests on the data. Uh, so we use a fixed effect model with the Osman test. Uh, we put also a time dummies and we cluster at the individual level to allow to, uh, to allow heteroscedasticity and uh, autocorrelation inside each individual, so each lab. Uh, some determining factor in the wine market, so we have um, macroeconomics factor, we have custom data, uh, some problem with the exportation, which are less than 1% of the Swiss production because uh, we get, so we know that there is a certain exportation, but we cannot discriminate between Swiss wine and foreign wine. This is a bit a problem, and sometimes we have like average prices of, uh, I don't know, 200 francs per liter that go to Hong Kong, and this is clearly no Swiss wine. So it's, it's difficult for the moment to discriminate between, between uh, what is Swiss and, and what is foreign wine. Some uh, socio-democratic factor, uh, climatic factor, as I said before, and also agricultural data like the harvest and, uh, and, uh, and the stocks. So as I said before, the, the, this, um, we have to do with endogeneity. So um, what we want to find is a supply shifter, okay? So something that has a variation on the, on the, um, on the supply curve to identify the demand. And so we have some potential candidates, so the first are Climatic variable, as temperature and rain, uh, following so Aschenfelter 2008. We have also the so the harvest for red and, and white grapes and stocks, and other also other candidates like wine import prices, exchange rate, and other macro variables. So this is just an example of supply and demand shift. So. For supply shift, we can have also some weather shock, like the hail, the harvest, of course, and the average weather. And in the demand side, um, we identified so the exchange rate, so import prices, and the weather in general, especially, as I said, for rosé wine, because we find this strong uh, correlation. Okay, this is also an example of demand shift. So as you know, it's Switzerland is not part of the Eurozone, so we are very sensitive to this uh, currency shock. And then the last currency shock was in 2015, when the Swiss National Bank uh, decided to, um, to leave this uh, exchange rate at 1.2. And this, of course, increased the, the, the competition for Swiss wine. And uh, we have a lot of examples of tourist shopping, especially uh, near the border, so the Swiss people just go, just cross the border, buy foreign wine. And come now come to the econometric model. So we have um, a fixed effect panel data model. Uh, in the second equation, uh, we have so we want to estimate theta, which is the uh, actually the elasticity. We have some uh, time uh, variant uh, control variables, time invariant. Then we have CI, which is the unobserved heterogeneity. As I said, we put also time dummies uh, and idiosyncratic errors. And, uh, and the first step of, uh, of this uh, regression is the, so the regression of the log prices on the IBs, as I said before. And now the, pro so the problem is that, okay, we, we get out of, we get rid of this uh, unobserved heterogeneity, but we cannot estimate the time invariant variable as we, we are using a fixed effect model. So one of the solutions that we, that we find is the, the Mondrak approach. Uh, so that we, in a certain sense, run a random effect model. And then we, we um, model the unobserved heterogeneity as a <coughs> function of the average prices. And uh, so if you see uh, the, the last step, um, if you conclude that this uh, phi, uh, so rejecting the null hypothesis that phi is zero, we have fixed effect, and, uh, and then this confirms also the, the first Hausmann test that I mentioned before. So the, here we have the first and the, and the second step of this Mandlach approach. And uh, so the advantages of this uh, approach is that we can obtain the same coefficient as the fixed effect model. Uh, we can estimate time invariant variable. This is quite important because we have a lot of this kind of variable, like color region. And we control for averages of the explanatory variable. So it's mainly the log 
log of prices. These are some graphical results. So we have the, so first of all, the pool OLS model, uh, the fixed effect, this is the, the mean interest, and also the between effect model. I come to the result. So uh, for the fixed effect model, so we find this uh, minus two. Uh, then it seems that with the IV strategy uh, for the harvest and the climatic, we find a lowering, uh, let's say, uh, price elasticity. So of minus 1.5 and minus uh, 1.5. Uh, uh, yeah, come with the result with the, when we add the, all the control variables. So, for the fixed effect, it's fine, and for the, the IV strategy, we still have some, I would say, issues with multicollinearity and correlation between controls that we have yet to fix. For example, in the specification number number six, where we have minus five of price elasticity. Okay, these are just the, the result of the fixed effect model, disaggregated by color and by region. So we can find again the minus two, so for Switzerland total. And maybe one other interesting result is the, the rose, rose wine uh, for Valais, because it's the main producer of, of rose wine in Switzerland, and it seems that the reaction of the consumer to a price change is higher for this kind of wine. So just now I come to the conclusion. So um, we have, uh, as I said, important variation uh, in the correlation coefficient when we add uh, all the control variables. So maybe uh, we have to deal with this within between correlation, so multicollinearity, and also for choosing maybe better uh, instrumental variable. Um, here we have also this story of mixed frequency issue between IVs and, uh, and uh, quantity and prices. And just to know, so the next step that we are dealing, that we have to present uh, soon, is a project of modeling and forecasting the Swiss wine market with panel uh, vector of autogressive model and the impact of uh, wine price promotion with a property score matching. Yeah, I thank you for your attention.